Hey everybody, this is Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we are going to talk about PubSub. Now this is a feared topic in some areas, but I'd like to demystify it a little bit and show you how it actually works under the hood. And then in the next video episode, we're going to actually take PubSub and implement a part of our application. Let's get started. As you recall, we've been working on this particular application. It has a list of puzzles. We could actually see that puzzle and we can go back to the overall list. We can pick another puzzle. We can look at the points. But as we are working on these individual points, these actions are not saved directly into a database. And you might not be surprised that in web development, this actually happens quite a bit. So what we want to do is to provide a way, aside from the database, that different applications can know about what one another are doing. And a great technique for solving this problem is the Phoenix PubSub API. We're in the editor for the application, though we're not going to use it for very much. What I'd like to do is actually show you how this thing is configured. The Phoenix configuration is broken into these different elements of configuration. There's runtime that's going to be used when, when we deploy the application and production is the actual production configuration. And then there's the test and development configurations. But then there's an overall configuration that has elements common to the entire application. And one of these things is the PubSub. So I'm going to look for PubSub. PubSub stands for Publish Subscribe, and all this is is a registry. It's just a key value set that's implemented in this PubSub dependency, and there's an API for using that key value set to associate a list of interested subscribers with a topic. So if I want to be notified when a particular thing on an application changes, like a puzzle with a particular ID, I might subscribe to an individual topic. Now, what I want to show you out of the gate is that all that we're doing here is starting a PubSub server out of the gate with Phoenix. So our next step is to go into an IEX console started in the context of this Riddler application and then start looking at the process structure. And we're going to do that next. Okay, so here I am in the console, and what I'd like to do next is to go spelunking a little bit and look at how the process is registered. So I can know one of two things. First, I can know that under the hood, Erlang has a global process registry where most of these things are placed. And here I'm, I'm not going to typically use this API, I'll use another one instead, or specifically I'll refer to it by name, but I want you to know all we're talking about is a process that implements a key value set and the keys are individual topics and the values are a list and all the processes that have subscribed to register for interest on those topics. And so what I'd like to do is look at some of the functions that's available in Erlang underneath. And one of the ones that you can see is here, this register process. So that is a way to register a process with a running Elixir registry, or there's a global process registry and I can see which processes are registered there. And so that's the function that I'm going to use next. So this is registered. So I'm going to start with this process name and then I'm going to look it up with a gen server dot where is and then I'm going to look up do one more call to process dot alive yes I do have a running process and that is this thing and the API that I'm going to use to access it is in phoenix dot pub pub sub just like that so I'm going to do this help and this gives us a whole lot of information about the setup 
Now, we don't have to do any of the setup. It's already been established in our Elixir configuration. All we need to do is start to use it. And what that means is that we need first to register for interest. And second, then we can broadcast to it. And third, then we can receive messages that are broadcasted to that topic. And that's what we're going to do next. Set again, we're going to first subscribe to interest. Second, whenever something interesting happens, we're going to broadcast to the interest in, in that same topic, which is going to be a string. And then third, we're going to receive messages that are sent to that individual topic. So let's see how that works next. So just to add a bit of emphasis to it, this is a running process. I'm going to type observer.start. Okay, so my observer is started. Now I can switch to it. I'm going to look at the applications and you can see, yes, this is my Riddler application. Here's the supervisor. Here's all the processes underneath it. And you don't have to go too far before you could see the Elixir Riddler PubSub Supervisor. And that has our Elixir Riddler PubSub. And this Riddler.PubSub, that was the one that we asked for in the configuration. And notice it has a couple of different partitions here. And I imagine that that's for single point of failure or maybe performance bottlenecks. We, we really don't know. But the important part here is that we can see that this is just a, a, a simple process that, that has key value pairs in it. And they're really empty right now, but we're about to register for interest. So let's see how this materializes over time. Okay, so it's time to get a little bit of work done. We said the three things that we need to do. The first one is register for interest. And the next thing was to broadcast to a topic. And then the next thing was to receive a message. And the nice thing about it is that there might be multiple receivers that are interested in, I don't know, for example, a chat room and multiple broadcasters interested in the same chat room and they can all communicate to one another with these tools. So what we're going to do first is this registering process, right? So registering for interest, this is pub sub. So this is the subscribe part. And I'm going to say h phoenix dot pub dot subscribe. And this is telling us that we need to subscribe. We need to specify our server, which if you recall our name, it's it was Riddler pub sub is equal to Riddler dot pub sub. OK, and all this is this isn't some kind of implementation here. We're just using a namespaced atom. So if I say is atom ps, I'm going to get a true. All this is is sugar around a regular, a plain old Elixir atom. And we're pretty sure it's not going to collide with other PubSub servers because our name is on first, which is why we structure it that way. And so what I can do is say now I want to register this process that is self I'm registering process 05070 for interest in this topic and let's say the topic is puzzle uh, let's say the ID of four right puzzle name or number four or how about 42 okay so now I can subscribe, which is phoenix.pubsub 
dot subscribe and I have a topic and I have the pub sub server and then I have options but these options are defaulted you could see up here so I don't need to specify them so all I'm doing is saying hey if any broadcasts come in for the topic puzzle 42 to this pub sub server I want to know about them okay so now I'm registered so next let's take a peek at what's going on in the observer okay let's scroll back and see what what our steps were so we registered for interest with a subscribe next we have to broadcast on the topic and so all we're going to do is say h phoenix pub sub dot tab to see what's here and you can see that there's a couple of different elements of broadcast we're going to look at this one right here and it tells us that we need to specify the pub sub server the topic and the message and it looks like the message is of type message and that's going to be a payload. Let's see if that can be anything that we want it to be. Like, for example, what if it was just a set of points? And so let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I'm going to let that fly. So I'm going to say Phoenix. Dot pub sub dot. And then I'm going to paste this in. And the pub sub was the ps that was the pub sub server that was that we had before that's riddler.pubsub and the topic was topic <laughs> it was already ready for me i didn't need to delete it and then i need to send a list of points that have changed let's do actually let's do let's make it a, a map or actually how about a list of points that's on right so that could be, for example, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. Now, very likely, what we could do is just say something like we could send a changed message, right? And then everyone that's subscribed to the topic has access to the database, and then they could just look it up. But I could send a message that looked like that, or I could send a message that looks like this. All right? Okay, so now what should have happened is that we registered for interest and we sent a broadcast, and now what we need to do is receive the message. Well, it turns out that we don't have a, a typical situation. In our case, the process ID that has registered for interest and the process ID that is broadcasting are one and the same. So we ought to be able to just get the messages in our process mailbox, which could be a receive, do, and then the message, the message, or I could use the IEX helper and just type flush. And this will give me all the messages. Okay, and the messages that we're getting are this list of points and this changed message. So what we're going to do in the next video is to use this feature to provide a facility in our application that allows us to wire different pieces of our application together so that when important things change, our users can know about it, thanks to Phoenix PubSub. And that's an excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.